I've provided a lot of coverage on my channel related to all things Android Root. And in fact, I've got an entire playlist dedicated to just that topic alone, which I'll link up in the cards and down below. However, the number one question I get asked on pretty much every single one of these Android Root videos is how do you update your phone once it's rooted? And that's because once your phone is rooted, you can't just simply do a wireless over the air system update whenever a new one rolls around because phones contain what's called a pre-OTA block check, which among other things, checks if your phone is rooted and if it is, it'll block the update from happening. It is one of the bigger downsides to having a rooted phone, but the good news is that you can still update your phone manually with a little bit of know-how. And so consider this video your one-stop solution for how to update a rooted phone. And for the most part, if you've rooted your device using Magisk, then this process should work for almost any device. That said, obviously take your precautions with this, possibly even do a system backup prior just in case. But with that being said, let's dive in. Now, the first thing to point out is that there are actually a few methods for updating a rooted phone, but I'm gonna be explaining the one that I personally use as I find it to be not only the most universal, but also the most reliable. As well as that, if you've already got a rooted device, then I'm gonna assume you also already have ADB set up and ready to go on your computer, as well as USB debugging on your phone. However, if you don't have either set up, then you can literally watch any of my How to Root X device videos and they'll all explain these parts of the process. I'll also leave an article linked down below if you'd prefer to just read how to do it. But if you wanna follow along with this video exactly, just make sure that your platform-tools folder is sitting on your desktop. All right, for this method, you'll need to have access to the latest factory and OTA images for your device of choice. For Google Pixel devices, this is made incredibly easy because Google uploads all of these files to a developer's page every time there's a new update out. But if you're not using a Pixel phone, then you'll need to locate these files elsewhere. Generally speaking, unless your phone is really niche, you should just be able to perform a quick Google search with your device name, followed by the terms OTA image files or factory image files, and then you should be able to find the files that you're looking for. Often there will be a friendly user uploading these files for download over on XDA, or sometimes you'll be able to find them on a site like needrom.com. But whichever website you're using, just be careful to ensure that the files you're downloading match your specific device and region, as using the wrong files may result in some features becoming broken. So for the Pixel 6, which will be the device that I'm using for this demonstration, like I said, on my computer, I can just navigate first to the factory images page and find the latest factory image file under the Pixel 6 section and click on link to download it. And then I can navigate to the full OTA images page and again, find and download the latest OTA files and click to download. These will both be pretty massive files around a couple of gigabytes each, but once they've completed downloading, we wanna then first locate the factory zip file, which will be the one without OTA in the name, double click that to extract it, and then double click this other zip file called image dash blah, blah, blah. Now, if you're running Android 12 on your rooted device, then prior to one of the recent Magisk updates, you would have needed to disable what's called DM Verity Check via ADB using this vbmeta.image file, not only when you first rooted your device, but also each time you wanted to update your phone as well. But if you're running version 24 or later of Magisk, then you don't need to do this process anymore. But with that being said, with this image zip file now opened, we now need to plug our phone into our computer and then transfer this file called boot.image somewhere we'll remember on our phone. I'm just gonna put mine in the documents folder via Android file transfer. With that done, we now wanna find that OTA zip file we downloaded, which is the one with OTA in the file name. And then to make life easier for everyone, we're gonna rename it to simply OTA.zip. And then we'll move that file to that platform tools folder sitting on our desktop. All right, with our device still plugged in, we now need to open up a command prompt application, which for me on a Mac is gonna be the terminal application, but use whichever one you have access to. And then with it open, we're gonna type the following cd space desktop and then enter and then cd space platform dash tools and then enter now just to save me from having to repeat myself a thousand times because i'm using a mac for this demonstration anytime i type an adb command i'll need to add a dot and a slash before the word adb so i will keep saying it like that because that's what i'm doing but if you're using a windows pc then you can just type adb without the dot or slash does that make sense? 
Okay, so from here, we're gonna type dot slash ADB space reboot space recovery, and then hit enter. This will switch our phone off and for some devices, it'll go straight into recovery mode. But for others, you may see this icon of a robot Android lying down. And if you do, you'll need to hold the power button and press volume up, and then you should enter recovery mode. Then we wanna use the volume keys on our phone to navigate to the apply update from ADB option and then hit the power button to select it. Then on our computer, we'll type the following command, dot slash ADB space sideload space OTA.zip. And with that typed out, we can hit enter. This will now go through the process of updating our phone, which it will do in two steps. And this can take quite some time, somewhere between five to 10 minutes, sometimes even longer, depending on the update. And keep in mind, on the rare occasion, I've actually had the update fail before completing. And the first time this happened, I actually didn't realize it. And so assuming it was complete, I rebooted my device only for it to go into a boot loop. Luckily, I just needed to reboot into recovery mode again and apply the update once more, and then it did successfully update. So keep that in mind. For some reason, that seems to be something that can happen from time to time with the update not completing. So just keep trying until it does successfully complete. But once the OTA completes, we will be back in recovery mode and we can now select the reboot to system now option. Our phone will now reboot and just give your phone a little bit of time to fully update before moving on to the next step. All right, with that done and our phone fully updated, we will actually no longer be rooted, meaning we need to once more root our device. To do this, open the Magisk application and then tap on the install button. Then choose the select and patch a file option and then navigate to that boot.image file you transferred to your device earlier. I moved mine to the documents folder, so I'll select that and then I can tap on let's go. Magisk Manager will now go ahead and create a patched version of this boot image file and store it in the downloads folder on our phone. And so back on our computer, we then wanna reopen Android file transfer or just the file explorer on a Windows device and find that newly created patched boot image file. Once we've found it, we then wanna transfer that file, which will be called magisk underscore patched and then some random numbers.img to the platform tools folder on our desktop. And then with our device still plugged in, we now wanna use our command prompt application once more, but this time launch our phone into fast boot mode, which we can do so by typing dot slash ADB space reboot space bootloader, and then hit enter. Once our phone is booted into fast boot mode, there are one of two options here. We can either directly flash the magic patched boot image file if we're really confident in what we're doing, but the safer approach is to just temporarily boot our device via that patched boot image file, which will allow us to verify that everything is working as expected. But if it's not, it's just temporary and it will undo itself the next time we reboot. To do this, we're gonna type the following, dot slash fast boot or just fast boot on a Windows machine, then space, boot, space, and then we wanna drag and drop the magisk underscore patched image file directly from our platform tools folder to where our cursor is. And once that's completed, we can then hit enter. Once your device boots back up, you will in fact be rooted once more. However, only temporarily. So to complete the job and make sure it stays rooted, we'll need to reopen the magisk manager application, then tap on install, then direct install, and then let's go. We can then wait for the process to complete. And once it has, we can then tap on reboot. If all has gone according to plan, your phone will now be both updated to the latest software version and it'll still be rooted. How good's that? Now, this is obviously a downside to having a rooted phone. However, if you've rooted your phone using Magisk in the past, then this process is honestly very much the same. And now you can just bookmark this video so that anytime you need to update your phone, you just open this one up, follow along, and you're done. Each month, it only takes me about 20 minutes or so to complete the process. And part of that time is spent actually downloading the files and waiting for the OTA update to complete. But aside from that, it's actually relatively simple and fast. And so that's it. If you found this video helpful, then a sub to the channel would be greatly appreciated. But aside from that, thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.